classic, classic song by a band or group that is kind of a tongue twister to say. The Credence Clearwater Revival, Proud Mary. Everybody knows the song. We've all heard it so many times. Phenomenal song. I don't think I've heard this 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 version though. The Ed Sullivan live version, live performance on Ed Sullivan. Um, it is funny though, like for the Credence Clearwater Revival. Um, just a, what a name for a group. Like imagine being a radio host and having to say it, and like it's just it's it's <laughs> quite the tongue twister. Uh, phenomenal song though from a phenomenal group. So I'm looking forward to hearing this for the first time. This live performance version of it. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Jacob Restituto, and I'm a musician from Northport, New York. And I really appreciate you coming out and checking out this channel. If you're not new, thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate that even more. Your time is valuable, and I appreciate you spending it with me. So let's get right into this live. You know, I gotta say before we even actually get into this. What an icon uh, Ed Sullivan is and his show just with so many now what we call like icons of the music industry and how many of them he had on. And now if we want to go back and look at some live performances by these icons, we go to the Ed Sullivan show. And it's just what a cool way to be ingrained in history with so many of these phenomenal artists. Just I appreciate that. And I think that that's really cool. Guitar tone is phenomenal. Look a good job in the city. Working for the man every night and day. And I never lost one minute of sleep. And worrying about the way things might have been. This wheel will keep on turning. Crown mirror keep on burning. Uh, let's pause. Here. Let's talk about this. What was it about this time period where the songs were so short, like a two-minute song? I'm curious. Like what made, like what, what was in the air that so many of these artists wrote s shorter songs? Um, that being said, this I've heard so many different versions of this song, and like I still hear different versions because for some reason it's very popular wedding song when you have a live band at a wedding. Uh, it's always on the set list. I don't, I don't. It's, I mean, maybe it's just, it's just a great song, but it's just a funny song to have um, for weddings. But that being said. Really great track. Um, production's phenomenal for uh, what I would probably assume is the seventies, early seventies. I don't know the date. I, I um, maybe I could find it. They say it down here. It is sixty nine, March 9th, uh, nineteen sixty nine. Really great quality of recording. I always find it really interesting uh, stylistic choice when the guitarist and the bassist share a microphone. I'm curious, like what the stylistic choice is behind that. Like why not just have two microphones? Is it a performance thing? Is it a sound thing? Like I'm curious because you, then you can you can't mix them. Uh, if, if one singer sounds is louder or closer than the, than the other, it'll change the sound. And it's just interesting that, that they they don't have it mixed or the preference to choose uh, two singers or two mic two singers on one microphone instead of uh, each having their own. That being said, though, one thing I really 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 appreciate about um, these live performances is the musicianship and the vocalization, the quality of the vocal, in the sense that. Um, there was no pitch correction. There was no double tracking. There was no takes. There was like, this was live and as live as it can get. And like now you have the option, even on what sounds to be like authentically live performances, that on on mixing consoles, these digital mixing consoles, you can put put an effect of pitch correction. You could tell it what key it's in, and you could say, hey, fix these within these parameters. Fix these notes if they're off within these parameters. And it sounds really really natural. So these artists sound like they're perfectly in pitch. And it doesn't sound like it's auto-tuned. It just sounds good. Um, it might not be live or like real. And there was no way to do that back then. It's just incredible level of musicianship that I really admire. And these, like, when you hear these songs and these singers, you're like, wow, like they really had great voices. <laughs> It's a great track. Look at that little wheel going, or the big wheel. That's a cool shot, man. We got a bunch of things. We got the wheel, we had his shot, and we had the background of the, the, the band. That's actually really, that's a cool shot. That's a really cool shot. Transition to the harmony, this is cool. 
Mmm, you hear the guitar matching that melody? That was cool. Hear that? Call and response. Is that a Rickenbacker guitar? Gretsch? Big reverb. Bet you gonna find some people who live. You don't have to worry, but you have no money. People on the river have been a kill. The big wheel will keep on turning. Brown mirror keep on burning. Rolling, rolling, rolling on the river. Rolling. I love the guitar matching the melody. Oh, come on. I wanted to fade out or something. Give me something. Uh, one thing I want to talk about is this microphone here. I thought it might have been like a vocal microphone, but I'm curious. Does anybody know the process of recording drums back then, live drums? Like, was this the overhead microphone right here that they use? Like, or here? Or is like, do we have a better shot of the drums? Because I'm curious the placement of that right there, if it just had slipped down or if that's the overhead. But like, I don't see any other mic. So how do they record the drums? It, very, unless that one mic is picking up the whole drum kit. I mean, there's no sound hole here in the in the kick drum. So I wonder if that one mic is picking everything up. It's incredible how they got these things to sound back there with the simplicity of, of production and recording. And we have so we have so so much options. Almost like analysis by paral paralysis by analysis because there's so many options today. Oh, do you want this microphone or that microphone? Like everybody used the same microphone back then. And uh, does anybody know the brand? Like I'm curious what that that brand is. It's a very distinct microphone. But man, what a great track! What a great artist! Really cool. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. What you want me to check out next? Again, if you're new, please consider subscribing. Let me know what you people, what you enjoy, what you want to see next. So, thank you so much. Have a great day. God bless and peace out.